and today we're going to assemble the Inventables X-Carve. So a couple of weeks ago, Jamie and I picked up the 1,000mm X-Carve from Inventables. It's a router-based CNC machine that comes in essentially a DIY kit that you put together yourself from like a bunch of boxes and like hundreds and hundreds of pieces. This is less of a how-to and more of a watch us do it video so that you can see how it works and kind of understand the process. And hopefully if you're thinking about building one of these yourself or if you're looking at maybe purchasing one, you can learn a thing or two and be a little more informed to make a decision. The first thing we did was clear out a work area for the X-Carve. We wanted it close to the dust collection, so we moved the router table out of the way and brought in this old rickety table that we had. It looks nice, but it's actually kind of a piece of junk, so we had to screw on some 2x4s to the bottom to keep it from racking. We had done the measurements and it seemed like it was going to fit, but it was really nice when we pulled out the waste board from the package and found that it fit perfectly on this table. The unboxing of everything was a lot of fun. It came in three or four boxes, it was all neatly packed, and there was like a million pieces. So the instructions that Inventables provide to build the X-Carve are on their website and they're super easy to follow. The first thing they have you build are the side plates for the gantry, and each of these plates has a bunch of wheels, a couple of idler pulleys, and a motor. The official instructions had the very first step being installing the threaded inserts in the bottom of the waste board that we put on the table, but those are shipping a little later and we don't have them in hand yet, so we actually went ahead with the rest of the build because we were far too impatient to wait for them. So far everything had gone together really easily, I mean you basically just follow the instructions and you've got a couple of wrenches and some allen keys and you're just screwing in parts and following directions, it's really not hard at all. These tiny little micro switches are called the homing switches and there's one for X, for Y, and for the Z axis. And they basically make it so that as the gantry's moving, if it moves too far, the switch will click on and stop. The next step was the X carriage, which is basically the centerpiece that the spindle attaches to and it's the thing that actually moves around and does the cutting. You can tell that we're definitely CNC experts here by the way that we have no idea what this stuff does or what it's called. Jamie happens to have slightly smaller hands than I do, so she was able to fit them inside the little metal carriage and fit the wheels and the idler pulleys just fine. Next I attach the X-axis motor onto the carriage. And then there's a small bracket that the drag chain will attach to, as well as a homing switch for the X-axis. Next up were a handful of mechanical parts that are responsible for moving the actual spindle up and down. So you've got a bearing and you've got a lead screw that kind of bolt on and the motor turns this screw and then moves a little plate up and down which in turn moves the spindle. Everything related to the Z axis was super easy to put together. There's not even any real tricky parts. You just follow the directions and as long as you can read, uh, you're going to be good to go. Next it was time to attach that whole assembly to the X carriage. So you do that by putting on some of these pre-assembly nuts and then sliding it on. Once it's on there you kind of just rough it in place. You're going to end up adjusting this later to make sure that the whole thing is square to the table. So at this point you just put on a little bit of grease, turn the screw around, make sure things are moving well, and then it's on to the spindle mount. This is the thing that the actual router sits in. Now it has four wheels, two of them are adjustable and two of them are static. The adjustable wheels allow you to adjust the tension so that as it moves up and down it's not wobbling. This then gets bolted onto that little plate that moves up and down with the lead screw, and now as you turn that, it'll move up and down. A quick turn of the wrench sets the tension on those adjustable wheels, and then we can put the third and final homing switch on for the Z-axis. These switches are rad, but they are kind of delicate, so Inventables put a little screw right here to make sure that if the spindle goes too high, it won't crush the switch. Finally, it was time to assemble the gantry. We had the two side plates, one of which gets bolted onto the first side. We used a spacer block to kind of hold it up for us. We then slid on the X carriage using the wheels that are installed in the middle. They slide right along the rail. And then the side plate gets bolted onto the opposite side. This all went together really easily. Finally, there's one more rail that gets installed on kind of the back of it. And this is what the drag chain is actually going to get bolted onto to hold it in place. So the rails get bolted onto the side of the wasteboard and then the gantry actually rolls on these rails once the belts are installed. But before you bolt the rails on, you need to put the actual gantry onto the rails because it'll be really hard slash impossible to get that on after. So you slide the gantry on, put the rails roughly in place, and then these little plates bolt it onto the actual frame of the wasteboard. As I was recording this, it just occurred to me that we don't have any footage of us bolting the frame onto the wasteboard, so sorry about that. Here's a baby instead. This little screw here goes onto the side rail about three quarters of an inch from the end, and this is what the homing switch is gonna actually bump into. So that gets positioned there, and nice. Inventable sends you one really long piece of belt that you cut into three equal lengths and then you get two on the y-axis 
one on each side, and then you get one on the x-axis. They say in the directions that this is the hardest thing to put on, but I actually found it kind of easy using this method here. Once the belts are fed through, one of the sides gets statically attached, and then the other side uses this clever tensioner so that you can rotate this little nut to tension the belt. We then slide in the Z-axis motor around a tiny little belt that goes around the motor and the lead screw, slide in the bolts, hold the motor tight to tension the belt, and then tighten down the bolts. Next, we unboxed the DeWalt 611 spindle, which is the router that Inventables ships with and recommends. We take off the existing base and the collar, and then slide just the bare metal router down into the spindle mount. You pry open the spindle mount a little bit with a screwdriver, that helps. And then you just tighten down these bolts and it's secure. So the wiring was probably the least fun part of this whole setup, even though this drag chain thing is super fun and super cool. After unpacking and organizing all the wires, the first thing to do was to attach the Z-probe wire to the X carriage here, and then we had to sort of methodically organize all the wires inside the drag chain and close all these little tabs, leaving enough slack so that you can plug everything in up top and then onto the side rails, but then not at so much slack that you couldn't pull it back through later to have it look nice and not be in the way. This took a little bit of trial and error, but we eventually got it all set up. Once the wires are all set up, you bolt it down to the back rail there, slide it into place, and finally it moves, and man, that looks cool. Oh, but wait, the fun's not over yet. We have to do the whole thing all over again for the side. All right, feed all the wires in, close all the tabs, position everything, get your slack correct, bolt it down, and there we go. We picked up the optional sideboard, and this piece gets put together before you bolt down the bottom of the drag chain because it all kind of bolts into the same place. It has a basic rail system that goes on the bottom, so you put that together, bolt the sideboard itself down onto the rails, and then that gets taken over to the side. Some more solid engineering here from Inventables. This thing bolted right in with no problems whatsoever. This controller is essentially the circuit board, the power supply, and all the various electrical components that actually make the magic happen. This thing went together very easily. When I received this circuit board, there was a broken piece, but props to Inventables, I contacted their support and they sent me a new one like the next day, no questions asked. I was really happy that their support was so easy to work with and they were super fast and responsive. I really appreciate that. I haven't had to use the big red button of doom yet, but I'm glad it's there. It's basically an emergency switch that just stops everything in case something goes horribly wrong. So there's a USB plug in the back that gets installed. That's what actually hooks up to your computer. And then there's a little button panel that has a pause, a stop, and a cancel button. The little PCB has a couple of nylon spacers that get installed so that you can push it through and then install it to the front panel using some small little button head screws. This went on really easily and the buttons are great. After this, it was an exercise in plugging in various cords into their correct places, screwing things in, making sure all the terminals were good to go, and then putting it all together. The top slides into place, the button gets then connected so that you have your emergency super button, and then the front plate gets screwed on using a screw in each corner. Very easy. The back plate was just as easy. You screw on the little fan, and then there's a screw in each corner to get it in place, and it's good to go. Wiring up all of these terminals was again very easy. Just follow the instructions carefully and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Just remember on the Y2 axis, you need to swap those two wires so that the motor spins in the opposite direction so that both sides will move in the same way. That's super important. After that, we bolted it down and it was time to calibrate. Luckily, the table was spot on, perfectly level, didn't have to do anything there, but this was a little bit out of square, so we had to go back and readjust those bolts we mentioned earlier to square it up. And finally, a moment of truth to make sure the motors worked and the homing switches worked, and they did. Man, that was super fun. I love putting stuff like this together, and so does Jamie. This is like the perfect type of kit for us. The only thing we haven't done is an actual carve. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up the easel software, program something cool in there, and see what happens. Thank you guys for watching this. We hope you learned a little something and that you're a little bit more informed on your X-Carve journey should you embark on one. If you enjoyed this video, we have a few more that you might enjoy that you can check out. We'd love if you liked the video and subscribe to the Wicked Makers channel. We have a lot of cool stuff coming your way soon and we'd hate for you to miss it. Thanks again and until next time, stay wicked. Assemble an Inventables. <laughs> the Inventables. It's a, it's a tongue history thing.